Welcome to Health Matters with Dr. Nelson Bulmash as he takes a fresh look at today's most interesting health topics with functional medicine's leading doctors and experts. Learn how to feed your mind, exercise your body, and nurture your spirit in the way nature intended. Catch him live every other Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Over the next hour, we'll introduce you to some fascinating people and engaging discussions that may provide you with answers to assist in revolutionizing your own personal health. And now, here's Dr. Nelson. Hi, everybody. Dr. Nelson Bullmash here, the host of Health Matters on the UI Media Network. I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday. I, I had one little element of, of <laughs> disappointment yesterday. I, I went down to see the fireworks, and as I got there and I was looking for a parking space, it began to pour fiercely, like a, like a tropical storm pour. And so I opened my window, and rain was coming in, and the wind was blustering, and I said, excuse me, did they cancel the fireworks? And everybody said, of course they did. And they're getting dumped on. It's raining so hard. And they're frustrated and, of course, dripping, dripping, dripping water from everywhere. Their hair, their noses, their clothes. And I said, Bummer, I just got down here and this is, this is an important day for me. Because I used to take my father to watch the fireworks. He loved it. And in the end, he ended up having severe consequences of having diabetes. And he ended up having dementia. But he always loved for me to take him to see the fireworks. And one of the things that we used to do is we used to go up to the top of Kennestone Hospital. Nobody knew this years ago. So we'd place our car up there and we'd watch the fireworks. Jeez. So nobody'd be around us. So there were maybe two other cars every year that got out. And there were more and more until there were <laughs> hundreds of people in the parking ramp in, in Marietta, Georgia, up on the, in the, on the top of the parking deck at the hospital there. And... This would have been the 15th anniversary of my father's death, actually on the 8th. So, you know, with the pandemic, I haven't had fireworks in, in two years. So they started them up again. So I get down there and I'm so excited because I love fireworks. I used to design rockets and launch rockets. And so I just have always loved fireworks. And I was going to honor my father by thinking about him while I enjoyed the fireworks yesterday. So as I mentioned, I get down there and it is pouring like we're in a tropical deluge. And so I think, well, okay, I'll take the hour to get home. And all of a sudden this morning, I thought, well, I can't wait to see when they reschedule it. Maybe it's tonight. And I found out that they waited the hour and 10 minutes and uh, had the fireworks sad. at 1040 last night. So yet again, I missed three straight years of fireworks. Anyhow, I hope yours were great. I did have a great weekend. But I just, I love my fireworks, and I'm going to make sure next year that somehow I see fireworks again. <laughs> Listen, I have a great show for you today. One of the things, as many of you know who, who watch my shows often, is I listen very carefully to my patients and the ideas and suggestions promoted by people who love and watch my show consistently. And one of the topics that's, that keeps coming up is, Nelson, I'm just tired. I feel depleted. I'm depressed, I'm anxious, and I can't shake it. I don't sleep well. I don't have the energy I want. This show is for you. It's really for all of us. Because the truth is, most of the people I know don't sleep as well as they'd like, me included. I uh, had COVID, and that sort of ended things for me in terms of sleeping soundly. Because when you don't breathe well, it makes it difficult for you to sleep well. So I have my very esteemed friend and colleague, Dr. Amy Darius, and we're going to talk about her wonderful book here. It's called Solve Your Sleep. It's wonderful. For all those of you who are struggling, please purchase it. She does an incredible job of talking about the health consequences that occur if you don't breathe well and you don't sleep well. And she makes a very compelling case for that if you're not breathing well and you're not sleeping well, you're going to have lots of problems, including anxiety and depression and fatigue and all kinds of other things. It might be brain function issues, heart attack issues, you name it. Everything is made better by sleeping and breathing well. Amy, it's such a pleasure to have you on my show. Thank you. Nelson, thank you so much for having me on. Oh, you're welcome. I made you a promise. I said when you finished your book, I was going to have you on again. I'm making good on my promise. <laughs> thank you. I loved your book. I hope everybody purchases Solve Your Sleep. 
It's excellent. It'll give you a lot of great ideas for those of you. And I know there are a whole lot of you out there who are have trouble sleeping. So please purchase this. I'll show that again. Amy, you're a, a dentist and you're a very good one. I, I'm going to take a moment here. I have to brag. Anytime somebody impresses me, I like to brag about them because we're not acknowledged as much as we could be and probably should be in this world. A lot of negativity. I'm going to take a moment for positivity. As you know, Amy, I was getting ready to go down to Florida. Mm-hmm. Month, it was about a month ago now, about, right? About yeah. then. Memorial mm-hmm. Day when you got your new computer. I did. I was heading down to Florida to fish. <laughs> So I had an interesting event happen. I had a show, and Ashley, you were here with me, my engineer here, my amazing engineer, Ashley Abel. The name doesn't get better than that. Hello. As I recall, didn't my, my cap fall off here after my show was finished? Yes, I do remember, do remember that? that. Yes. And I was sitting there slurring my speech, and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And it turned out, Amy, that my cap had raised up, and every time I would talk, the sharp edge of the tooth was going <laughs> into my cheek, Ouch. and I was bleeding. By the time I went into the bathroom after the show, I actually had blood in my mouth. Wow. I was thinking, this is really strange. Why is this happening that I can't speak properly here? I must be getting drunk on the set, but I'm not drinking. So it didn't make sense to me until I found the crown, fell out into my hand, and you saved my vacation. Because I'm going to tell you something. It would have been a rough ride going down to Florida because I kept biting into the side of my cheek. And for anybody who's lost a crown and you have it erode into your cheek, you know, it's very unpleasant and not fun, particularly when you're on vacation. So Dr. Amy Darius said, come in. I went in and she did something that had not been done for me before. The gentleman who put the, the crown on initially put it on in a way that it hurt me if I so much as touched the tooth through my cheek. I couldn't put a fork. I couldn't put a spoon in my mouth without it making me feel like I was being electrocuted. I know that sounds dramatic. It wasn't. Couldn't put anything hot or cold. Couldn't touch it with a fork or a spoon. I went this way for quite a number of years. So it finally fell fell out. And, you know, it's funny how life is perspective, right? I thought, well, I hear so many incredible things about Dr. Darius. I'm going to ask her if she'll put it on. She took the time. Her team at her office, they were fantastic. They treated me like royalty. She got me in there and she reset the crown. And she did something quite interesting is she had me stand up and bite down on the tooth to make sure the crown was settled properly. Amy, I have not had any pain touching it, hot, cold, fork, or spoon in my mouth since you did that. Awesome. That's a fist bump right there. Thank you. You're so welcome. And, And I promise that's truth. I can bite down, no pain at all. I want to give her, as my young friends like to say, props. I wanted to give her recognition because... It's really difficult when you bite down and you feel like you're having electrical discharge or you put a fork in and people, Nelson, are you okay? (laughs) Uh, I will be in a second. Sorry, the nerve roots got to settle down. So you did a great job. So I know you're a fantastic dentist. Thank you. But you do other things. Tell us about some of the other wonderful things that you've gotten involved with that you write up in your book. Well, the way I got to writing up this book was just sort of a, a personal journey. And um, I've done a lot of other things in the community. I, I grew up in this area. So growing up, we gardened a lot. Right. Um, I'm a mom. And at some point, I was a Girl Scout leader and did some other things mm-hmm. with kids. And I realized there were some things that would make our family life easier, uh, like eating well. Um, I noticed that one of my kids, after an accident, where she did a face plant. Right. Um she started snoring and we talked to the pediatrician. This, this daughter of mine is 20 now. So this is when she was about three to four years old. And um, this accident that she had instigated her getting, or started the process of her eventually getting her tonsils and adenoids out. She had a lot of dental crowding. I, as a child had a lot of dental crowding and I thought, Surely by now we have something different that's better than having somebody wear braces for years and years as I had done. And it, while it inspired me to become a dentist in a lot of ways, my dental history, I just thought I want something better for my kids. Mm -hmm. Um, We had seen other uh, correlations or things going on with this one daughter. She would have temper tantrums later. Um, She could, her preschool report card, so to speak, they said she could count to 44, but she could not sit still and circle time, which is really classic. And when she turned five, she wanted to learn how to play the violin. And I realized she could focus on the things that she really was interested in, right. but would struggle with just some basic 
things that she would have to do to be successful in mm -hmm. school. And I was looking for answers. She had dental crowding. What are we going to do about these teeth? I'm a dentist. I'm supposed to know how this stuff works. Meanwhile, we're starting these violin lessons. We're noticing these correlations. And I started going back to school. I got interested in learning some other things for myself. I'd been out of school for a lot of years at this point. I got out in the mid-1990s, and I did an herbal medicine program. And then I started experimenting, recommending some of these herbs to right. some of my patients. And a lot of them had to do with sleep because I did sleep appliances. Well, right. so I, I started straightening some teeth as a general dentist, just minor orthodontic movement. Mm -hmm. And some of them... For instance, my father-in-law used to camp out and he would be relegated to go camp over there away from everybody because his snoring was so bad. And there were these things being advertised in some of our dental journals about snore devices. And they were basically called mandibular advancement devices. They would move the lower jaw forward. Right. And by doing so, that would open the airway. And for some people, it would be enough where they wouldn't snore anymore. And we were starting to make a lot of these for people, especially are people that travel a lot and they didn't want to bring like their CPAP that machine, machine. Yeah. on their carry-on because that would take up basically their entire carry-on suitcase. Yes. So we started making these things and we found out these things really work. And then I wanted to do better. I wanted to find out, well, how effective is it? And there were these appliances out there called watch pads that you could send patients home with to do take home sleep testing. And I, then I could track how well are these things working. And then if these work, what else is out there? What right, else right. is contributing? And why is this even possible? Um, dentistry has changed. There's been a huge evolution, mm -hmm. revolution yes. in the last, I'd say, 10 or so years. years. But, <laughs> but actually, if you went back far enough, you'll see that the first data was published back in the late 1970s. Oh, so, wow. so some of the stuff really isn't like it didn't get discovered last week. Mm -hmm. But the more we learn, first of all, the dumber we find out whether we are or how we could have been doing things better, better. all along. Yes. But yes. then there's more other pathways that we find that when you get better sleep, it supports these other healing pathways for the body or it's just becoming more and more pronounced. Yes. So um, I started, I, I did an integrated medicine fellowship and I've dabbled. I, I'm a bit of a geek. I like to go home and mm -hmm. read and mm -hmm. learn things. So I found out through the, my, it, I'm not so smart. Anyone can do this work. Any dentist can do this work and more and more dentists are doing this work. Thank goodness, because we can really make a difference with people. So um, through education and desire and people coming in who could really benefit from these things. I found out that my dental work could hold up better. People could age better, feel better, and they keep coming back in and our right. practice grew. So it just continued the interest. It's, it's just grown by leaps and bounds. You know, it's funny, Amy, because you, you get family members and friends who come in that push you. My younger daughter is an amazing person, but she was the outlier in the family. Like no matter how much I adjust her, no matter how good my adjustments were, she needed additional things. Yes. She'd say, you know, Daddy, I feel great when you work on me, and then by the next day I don't. And that was very hard to hear because she's my baby. She's my youngest. Yes. And so, you know, I think, I don't get it. So many people in my practice, Amy, do so well. It turned out... She did not have strong arches in her feet, and she oh, needed... Oh, there's a correlation with sleep with that, too, yes. and dental, dental yes. things. Yes, and she has trouble with that, and mm -hmm. headaches, and so forth. So I got her an orthotics, and that made an enormous difference for her. Awesome. So I don't do orthotics, but I send people out now. So I understand that need that, like, you know, we can do this better. Let's explore. And we're going to take our first commercial break, Sounds and we'll be good. right back. Folks, I'm Dr. Nelson Bullnash. You're listening to another edition of Health Matters. We'll be right back with my guest, Amy Darius. Safety Air Purification Systems, an air purifier with robust technologies that can filter, sterilize, and re-energize large quantities of air at a whisper quiet volume. It features a proprietary HEPA RX and pre-filter that act as a capturing layer going for big particles and ultra-fine particles. Its next layer is an activated carbon filter that absorbs and captures volatile organic compounds and noxious odors. From viruses to bacteria, its kill chamber packs a three-punch layer to destroy over 99% of anything that remains in the air. And while most air purifiers stop at the capture or kill stage, Safety Air Purifier takes it one step further, re-energizing clean, pure, sterilized air by creating negative ions within the revitalizing chamber. 
The Safety Air Purifier also monitors air quality in real time, utilizing smart sensor technology that helps you breathe better air, increase productivity, and improve morale. But don't just take our word for it. Ask the thousands of workplaces we've helped. Fortune 500 companies, dental offices, senior facilities, K-12 schools and universities, and professional sports teams. The Safety Air Purifier's robust technology combined to protect you against indoor air pollutants and viruses to make the most powerful yet quietest air purifier. Safety Air Purification. Hey folks, we're back. I'm Dr. Nelson Bullnash. Again, I am the host of Health Matters on the UI Media Network. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. If you like my show, if you find my show beneficial, you learn a lot from it. It gives you opportunities to improve the quality of your health, your relationships, to inspire you to do things that make you better and improve the quality of your life. Please share it. I do this show, not because I became a billionaire doing it. I know you, some of you probably thought that. It is <laughs> untrue. I'm going to dismiss that myth right now. I do it because I have so many friends that I interact with or so many people that I interact with from around the world that I realized this was a way beyond my practice that I could make a difference in different places around the world. I want to give you a quick example. I started having a lot of women from Pakistan contact me. And I thought I said to one of them who I just love, she's an amazing woman who's really moving the educational process forward, particularly with younger children in Pakistan. And I said to her, Rouge, why do you why do you enjoy my show so much? And she said, Are you serious? I said, I'm quite serious. Yes. She said, Nelson, I live in Pakistan. Do you know how women are treated in Pakistan? I said, Well, I I've never been to Pakistan. I understand that. There's room for improvement in the way men treat women in that part of the world. She said, room for improvement. That's a beautiful euphemism. She said, one of the reasons that the women in, in India and Pakistan love to watch you so much is you treat your guests, particularly the women on your show, with such reverence. It inspires us about what is ahead for us. We appreciate you. Thank you for being who you are. Now, I never thought about that, Amy. Like, you know, that I'd be making a difference with women in India and Pakistan. Who That's knew? Fabulous. Right? But I've had a number of women from those two countries in particular reach out to me after seeing my show and say thank you for being so kind to not only the guests on your show, but particularly the women on your show. Because in our part of the world, women have always been second best to men. We appreciate you. We follow you. We thank you. So you're welcome. And once again, if you appreciate my show, I'm always open to ideas. If you have somebody that you think is extraordinary that would make a difference, let me know. Have them contact me. Otherwise, sit back and enjoy and learn because I have another amazing guest, Dr. Amy Darius, and we're going to talk about how you can sleep better and improving the quality of your sleep and your breathing. Anything regarding your health or your mood generally will improve. Awesome. All right. Thank you. You're so welcome. So, Amy, you have done the same thing I have. And I've noticed, and I, I probably shouldn't say this, but I noticed that the pioneers, the real thinkers in different fields, always want to expand the vision of how can we improve who we are and what we do for the sake of our patients. And I love that about you. That's such a fantastic characteristic about you is you're always looking to improve your ability to serve humanity. Thank you for that. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, so let's talk about some of the things that you got into. Why, for example, is sleep so important for you and your patients? Well, hmm, that's a great question. About 15 or so years ago, there were these TV shows on American television, mm -hmm. like Extreme Makeover, and people were coming in wanting to be like the people on those shows. It was a bit icky for me because a lot of those people would be getting veneers. So mm -hmm. they would make their smile look maybe like it had when they were young. Right. But I was thinking, well, why did their smile change? And if they were in a state of equilibrium, there really shouldn't have been a lot of change. Mm -hmm. And some of those people were young. And I thought there's going to be a shelf life with this dental work. Right. It really worries me because that we're, we're just putting these things on these people's teeth and we're not having really a conversation about why how did they get here? And I'm going to be facing those people later. 
if something happens to them. So when you do a lot of dental work on somebody, it's almost in a way like you've married them. First of all, you're all up in their personal space yeah, and right. they, they're spending some money with you. They're investing with you and you're investing time and a level of responsibility with them that you really mm -hmm. want it to see do well and, and survive a long time. So your question, I feel like I'm getting off on a tangent, which I'll do because I'm really comfortable chatting. No, it's okay. Yeah. The, um, so there were these shows like Extreme Makeover and, and we didn't know why all these people were having these problems. It, it actually hadn't been maybe published wide, in a widespread sort of way at that time. Um, but I found that my veneers and my dental work would hold up so much better. A lot of these people were grinding their teeth. Mm -hmm. And if I made them a bite guard, something to sleep with, with over their veneers or their dental work, there just weren't any issues. And I would just throw that in as part of their treatment. Oh, so it would protect their teeth. It would protect their it would stop teeth. stop the erosion of the teeth yes, as they ground because away. a lot of people didn't realize the importance of grinding. Yeah. And you can put up to 500 pounds per square inch if you're grinding your teeth. So it's like running wow. over yourself with an SUV or, or a, a tooth with part of an SUV. Yeah. And people hmm. don't understand that. So... And, and this is why I started getting interested in how can I measure this so I can prove to them that this is going on. I can't look at somebody to, and tell that they did it last night, for example. I just see the past damage. Yes. And what it looks like is if you took a crayon out of a new crayon box, box of crayons mm -hmm. and you colored only on one side of the point. Sure. And then if you maybe you have a little brother you're wanting to tease and then you turn the crayon and you put it back in the box. On one side, the crayon looks new. And on the other side, it's all worn down. And when you have these people with dental work or they're needing crown work or they've broken teeth or maybe they've had veneers, you'll frequently looking back, see this, these wear facets, these, which is like the flat side of the crown, yeah. mm -hmm. or these broken teeth, these cracked teeth. And I really just wasn't happy just fixing these all the time. It's just a little frustrating because they, if they break it once, they'll break something else or they'll break yeah. it again. And on some level... You know, you come to see me maybe for your checkup and it's a little, sometimes it was hard for me to say, you know what, you have another broken tooth because they're like, but I'm doing all the things you said. I'm doing all the brushing and the flossing. Um, I don't really think I grind. So I needed a way to measure this. So we got into doing some sleep testing to measure and one of our tests will measure um, grinding which was very enlightening. Sure. And then sometimes you'll see that if you got into their medical history, you would start seeing, well, there's a, there's a history of head injuries maybe here, or maybe a birth trauma where they always had problems. They always had dental crowding. And then our technology with x-rays would get better and better. We would upgrade our x-ray machine. So it would be digital, which would have less radiation than the mm -hmm. previous generation of x-rays. Right. And then they came out with these cone beam x-rays where you can put your chin on a shelf and you're not biting down on these really uncomfortable um, sensors, digital sensors. And now you can look at the airway. Wow. And the digital software that is available now it's, you're now looking at a 3D picture. And, and what we realized is what we were doing orthodontically when we would just straighten teeth is we would pull the teeth back to make them look straight, but we would compromise the space behind the teeth. So I brought my little skull here, All my right. colorful skull. Yes. So what we realized, the yellow bone is the maxilla. It's also the whole roof of the mouth. And traditionally with orthodontics, a lot of times to make things look good, we might even pull healthy teeth. And then we would pull things back to straighten things. But in doing so, there's actually an airway behind the teeth. And we were making that permanently smaller. Oh, um, interesting. So we, we realized, just like I liken a lot of analogies to shoes, be, because everybody wears shoes generally, and they, right. they get shoes. Mm -hmm. So if you can imagine, no matter how old you are, if you were a woman maybe, and you were wearing really pointy shoes over time you would develop bunions, you would yeah. develop deformed feet. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter if you started wearing the shoes at the age of 40, because that's when they came in to style these pointy shoes, for instance, or if you were a child or a young, a young person, it doesn't matter. The bone is going to constantly remodel. Right. So then we started realizing, wait, you mean this paradigm that we were taught that we couldn't expand or develop jawbone in a patient's skull after about age 10. It's actually not so we can continue to develop bone because every seven years, every cell in your body is regenerated. So Beautiful. we can develop the jaws and now you're going to change the function of everything inside the jaw. It's kind of like bumping a wall out on the side of your house 
And now we're at what used to be a walk-in closet is a full-size bedroom. Right. So you, you change the exterior by developing, and now the interior is going to be different, different and bigger. Yeah. And not only do we see improvement with breathing and airway, um, a lot of times kids that have ADHD, sometimes people with Parkinsonian symptoms. types of symptoms, mm -hmm. they get better. They feel better. They have fewer ticks, for example, sometimes in our practice. Fascinating. Um, kids that have had pandas, that's um, sometimes the aftermath of having a virus where they start having a lot of other autoimmune mm -hmm. types of issues. Um, the maxillary sinus behind the cheekbone, that's one of the major uh, storage areas for nitric oxide. So that is linked to when you have a, when you're a low nitric oxide maker, having worse like symptoms, for instance, of pandas. So when we expand and develop the jaw, sometimes those kids that we see who have problems with like ADHD or pandas, they, they can start really focusing at school. And we've had some really cool results in our practice with that. I love that. Amy, let's actually talk about that. That's one of my favorite sure. subjects because in every field of medicine, if you can improve, particularly as we get older, the nitric oxide uh, potential of the body means you have greater circulation. With greater circulation, you have greater nutrient delivery, greater oxygenation, greater lymphatic drainage. And you make ATP, which is your and energy. greater energy production. You yeah. got it, exactly. So one of the questions that I'm asked frequently, and, and I'm, I'm not a dentist, I'm going to defer to you, is what is okay to put in your mouth to gargle with or to use? Oh, as an, this is be, actually one of my soapboxes that I get all on. It has to be because it it, microorganisms have to change, which help. Right. Make a, forgive me. A, a, actually, I'm having a little bit of sound issue here. Are we tracking okay? Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. So the nitric oxide pathway was it was uh, the people that kind of discovered it mm -hmm. or developed right. or realized it. Um, it won the Nobel Prize for Medicine back in the 1990s. Yes. And there have been it, nitric oxide has is a gas. You have to make it. It only lasts point on a constant basis because it only lasts 0.1 milliseconds in the body. Wow. It's responsible for turning all the endothelial cell linings mm -hmm. or the cell linings of all of your blood vessels. Um, it helps with kidney filtration, cell apoptosis, in other words, killing off the cells that you don't want, One. like like mm -hmm. cancer cells. Um, it The mouth bacteria after age 40 are responsible for about 40 to 50% of your ability to make nitric oxide. So Fantastic. we don't want to kill everything off. Mm -hmm. The name of the game is not nuking or not necessarily nuking, but killing everything off, right. but um, living in symbiosis, living together with the type of bacteria that our bodies for millennia have, have had, um, have survived with. And there's actually, they, there's this hypothesis in functional medicine called the old friends hypothesis where the we we need and we thrive having certain types of bacteria in our systems. That's why people take probiotics when right. they've been sick. That's the damage that antibiotics can actually cause is it wipes out all the microflora throughout mm -hmm. the body. It doesn't just kill off the bad ones, like if you have strep throat. Right. It kills everything off. And then after that round of antibiotics, it's a race to the finish line. When you're breathing through your mouth, you change the microflora in the mouth. You cause... Um, more of a population, you're more likely to have a population of bacteria in your mouth that will cause gum disease, um, greater amounts of inflammation, sometimes cavities. The, the bacteria in your mouth influence everything else. This half of the bacteria in the mouth are also shared by the colon. Colon, right. And these help you absorb certain types of vitamins, and they are responsible for certain very important processes like the nitric oxide pathway and how well you work with it. Let's pick this up after yes. our next commercial break. Folks, Dr. Nelson Bullmash here. My guest is the amazing Amy Darius. We're talking about nitric oxide and how it alters the body's ability to deliver oxygen and nutrients, lymphatic drainage, and all the resources the body needs so that it can make increased cellular energy known as ATP. We'll be right back. If this content resonates with you, don't forget to subscribe to our channel at uimedianetwork.org to stay updated with our uncensored shows. Also, like and follow us at UI Media Network on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and almost all your favorite podcasting platforms. Most importantly, if you're being censored on social media, write to us at contact at uimedianetwork.org to get your message out. And remember, keep raising that frequency.
Hey everybody, Dr. Nelson Bull Nash here with my dear friend and esteemed dentist, among other things. I consider her an expert, is that okay, Amy? In, in helping to breathe, you, you probably, when you're so humble, you would probably say, I don't consider myself an expert, but you have a great deal of knowledge on how to improve the quality of your sleep and how to improve the quality of your ability to breathe. And those are so essential for all vital processes in the body. Those are. It starts with breathing. You can survive without food for a, f a number mm -hmm. of days, maybe weeks. Water, maybe for a couple days. of days. Yeah. And But breathing, mm -hmm. not long at all. Just a few seconds, really. But you asked me a few minutes ago about mouthwash. And yes. What, what might be a good idea, because I'm a dentist. To use it or not to use to it? To use it or not to use it. So first of all, mouthwash is a $2 trillion industry in the United States. Um, as of about three or four years ago, it might be slightly different now with right. inflation. But <laughs> but um, it's it's actually going to indiscriminately kill off the good and the bad bacteria. It doesn't only kill off the ones you want to kill off. So I don't like mouthwash at all. If if somebody's recently been extremely sick or they're getting very sick, mm -hmm. I like, for instance, an iodine-based mouthwash. Maybe if they if you think you're coming down, for instance, like with like COVID, right. for example, right. um, maybe rinsing with that. Or um, maybe you've had gum surgery. Maybe you want to rinse with something for about a week and a half, potentially after a, a major surgery like that. Right. But on the whole, I don't, I'm not a proponent. I'm not a massive advocate of using it. If you have a really hot date, maybe, and you've been just <laughs> bending on garlic rolls. But, <laughs> right, right, but right. you know what? It's, it, it's because it kills off the good and the bad bacteria, which now we realize have, that has so much really tremendous implication on your whole body health and mm -hmm. how well you absorb mm -hmm. vitamins. When you don't absorb vitamins well, when you're a mouth breather, when you have maybe other things going on in your body, like a heavy metal load, right. maybe you've had amalgam fillings that are still in your mouth, these things play into changing the type of bacteria that live in your mouth. Sure. And they, those change and heavily influence your entire health. Amy, I want to ask you a couple of questions. Here's where it gets a little tricky. I understand that 75% of the heart attacks we have, correct me, please, I, this is your expertise area, not mine are caused by a specific bacterium that is found in the mouth. Yes. Well, there was, there have been a number of studies. One of them was done, I think it's a, a Swedish study. It was done on uh, autopsies on over 100 mm -hmm. people that had died of heart attacks. And there were three specific uh, bacteria strains that caused cavities and several more that caused gum disease that right. were found in the heart valves where the heart attack had Happened. occurred. So this is how we realize when, when you have inflammation in your mouth, it's really the tip of the iceberg to inflammation in the whole body. Right. Um, so a third of people that have periodontal disease also have diabetes. Um, 19 or so percent of our general population has diabetes. About a third of our general population mm -hmm. is pre-diabetic. This is continuing to get worse. worse. Right. Um, we see in terms of when you, when you have these blood sugar changes, you also are stacking up and on the road towards cardiovascular problems. Let's talk about that. Okay. I wanted to, I wanted to lead us down that path. I have a couple of questions here, Amy, if I may. Number one, is there some kind of, uh, forgive me for using the military term, smart bomb type of technology that you can destroy or weaken, lessen the numbers of the bacteria that are found in they so are these virulent types of yeah, situations. Yeah, they're found in, in people yes. who have valve problems and heart attacks. Yes. Um, also, I think anyone over maybe the age of 30 or so should be tested for Lyme. I've had Lyme, mm -hmm. and I, mm -hmm. I think it can... I had a surgery myself, actually, right. uh, about a year and a half ago that was really unexpected. Um, and they said maybe part of it was Lyme. We all have different pre genetic predispositions, right. too. So... Um, you, what I would say is you want to put in more of the good and that might outpopulate the negative. That makes no, that makes a lot of sense. It's like if you have a gang that moves in, yes. maybe you can get rid of the gang if you have a lot of real estate that is sold to the friends. So we realize there are these so-called old friends. It's mm -hmm. an actual mm -hmm. hypothesis in medicine. I would recommend people take maybe probiotics. It doesn't have to be all the time. It doesn't have to be every day, but maybe a few times a, a week. week. Okay. Um, there's some really nice nutritional supplements that generally can really support overall decreasing inflammation and inflammatory pathways like fish oil. Yes. Um, and I like one that would be, that would contain more EPA. Um, and DHA. To mm -hmm. DHA. Mm -hmm. 
and it should say on your bottle. Otherwise, buy another brand the next time you go buy it. You can keep it in the freezer to have less uh, or fewer fish burps. Um, so, and then an encouraging nasal breathing, because that right there can really change the type of bacteria that right. live in you. Right. We find fewer of these types of bacteria present when somebody is breathing through their nose on a habitual basis. Interesting. By the way, I changed my whole breathing after I had this conversation with you the first time you were on my show. Really? Yeah. How about Believe that? it or not, I know it sounds crazy, but every time I wake up now, I'm breathing through my nose. Good. So thank you for that. You're welcome. And, and I think one of the major things that you educated me about is that when you breathe through your nose, in addition to altering the composition of bacteria in the mm -hmm. mouth, you also help put the, the body in what's called a parasympathetic dominant state. Talk to us a little that's bit about right. that, because that's so important to well, live well. What, there was a Ukrainian doctor, Dr. Butaiko, who mm -hmm. passed, I think, in maybe like the 1930s. He did a lot of research a long time ago now right. on the ratios of what can promote health in terms of um, the types of gases that you have inside of you. So yes. you have this nitric oxide, you have oxygen, you have carbon dioxide, mm -hmm. and we need to hold on to at least 6% carbon dioxide. Um, and your body's reaction when you don't hold on to that is it will clog up your nasal passages. So sometimes doing the simple meditation type breathing exercise, right. some people are subscribing to this like Wim Hof method, for yes. example, and some parts of medicine, they call it four, seven, eight breathing. Um, even on Sesame Street, Elmo has belly breathing. So it's <laughs> I this, love it. It's the type of breathing where you feel your whole abdomen expand. And right. maybe in yoga, you might do it where you feel um, your rib cage expand from, from the bottom, almost like the base of your spine, all the way up to your clavicles, your shoulder blades. Um, this promotes that 6% carbon dioxide, opening up your nasal passages if you're inhaling and in exhaling through your nose. So you inhale on four. Hold it, try to hold it for your count of seven right. and then try to exhale on the count of eight through your nose. And maybe any listeners out there might try that right now. And you might notice that there actually can really be a slight, at least a slight difference within just two or three breaths of what's going on with your nose. Now extrapolate this. Yeah. Makes sense. If you maybe do a little bedtime routine where you take maybe a steamy shower or maybe you have a nice cup of like chamomile tea yes. that can be relaxing um, and breathe in the steam of that tea, of that tea through your nose, you can help o open up these passages. If you have chronic allergies, maybe you, you try like a neti pot, something that can, or you do like a steam bath. I think I mentioned that already. There's also a product on the market called Clear. It's spelled X-L-E-A-R. It's containing xylitol, which can lubricate the nasal passages. Right? Some people like to use that. It's it's non-pharmaceutical in the sense of it's not like Afrin. I don't, yes. I'm not a proponent of like Afrin. Right, Excuse right. me. I guess I'm not supposed to say certain medicines, but um, I like the idea of just a steamy cup of tea, something mm -hmm. that's traditional that we've been using or drinking or enjoying for millennia. That sure. to me is probably the, usually the best way to go because we know it's yes. helpful and supportive of health. Some of the things, Amy, if I may, that I recommend to my patients too would be something like a dehist with quercetin yes, and, and enzymes. Uh, and there's some other, Albizia is another fantastic product. LRC is another one. And I oh, take those good. about an hour or two before I go to bed and it helps decrease the inflammation so I can maintain throughout the course of the night breathing through my nose. That was a big secret of, of, of mine That's cool. that, that helped me with that because I was really struggling. I'd find that suddenly at three, four, five in the morning, I was back breathing through my my mouth again because it wasn't getting oh, enough air through my interesting. nose. I like that. And then I also am a proponent sometimes of mouth tape or these chin uh -huh. straps. Mm -hmm. There's also a product out there called Dr. Woody Nose. And you it's like <laughs> these little nasal filters. It looks like something you take out of the bottom of your sink and you put them in your nostrils or right. you can breathe, use breathe right strips. Things that can spread. Like one of the things a person, a listener out there could do is um, take your fingers on either side of your nostrils and just spread that apart and see if See you if you can, can breathe, breathe a little easier. bit easier. Oh, got it. And you do this, though. You you get into a sense of I, you intentionally are doing nasal breathing before you go to bed. And then some people find it's helpful if they tape their mouth closed. Um, some of those people, that's where we started making these different appliances years and years ago. We found that sometimes just having something that trains the mouth shut right. can be helpful. You would never do this on a young, a very young child. We have SIDS and problems with that. Yeah, got it. But um, they, there really are actually also on the internet available some very, um, you know, some prefabricated little Devices. mouth appliances for children yeah, that can be helpful. And, th and these help them breathe better. They do. And they also, you know, one of the most beautiful things to me is if you imagine a, a fetus um, developing 
we're all like little flowers and we open up and we right. blossom. And so the way the fetus develops is, is everything comes up and opens up um, f- with the, with the folds. There's, there's fancy words for this, but it actually is a lot like my little toy here where you, you blossom, you open up sure. in a forward outward way. So um, as you do this nasal breathing, imagine your heart center being opened up more mm-hmm. and open your, open yourself up. It, you'll feel better emotionally, physically, you're going to function better. And I know I'm getting off on another tangent no, it's, here. No, it's fine. Because I was going to go into clearing the emotions It is it is something about like that. EFT. I know you're big on that too. I am. So if you, and you can do little, you can pinch like this little webbed place between your index and your thumb. That's right. a acupressure point for anxiety, managing anxiety if you're feeling anxious. Meditation can help. Um, getting yourself just in a frame of mind to sleep and cleaning up your bedtime routine where you reduce screen time or you wear those blue glasses. Talk about that. Okay. That's, that's very important, Amy, because... Oh, and EMF is another part of this it, too. We're going to go right into that because so many people go to bed, and I'm guilty as charged. Now I have a, a, a filter in place to help reduce, not so much the EMF, but the blue light. Oh, that's good. And, and that makes a difference. But let's talk for a minute about that because reducing blue light, which is very stimulating to yes. the brain and nervous system, yes. is very important. What are some of the other things you do? Are there supplements like magnesium? Oh, yes. And oh, that's my big, that's my $8 solution is yes. what I call it. I used to call it the $6 solution, solution. that we have in inflation. Inflation, so, yes. So I like to recommend for folks to take between, it's actually a lot, 400 and 1,200 milligrams of magnesium. How do you know what's right for you? Um, if you are taking it and have some t- temporary <laughs> diarrhea, that means you didn't need as much as what you just took. Sorry, so then that's back why I was off. laughing. I know it is funny, <laughs> the, but I promise it's temporary. It is temporary. Yes, it, yes, it is. We're, she's correct morning. about this. But it, it helps with gut health again and turning over and detoxing the gut. Mm-hmm. Um, it helps you. The magnesium helps you absorb your vitamin D from food sources and sunshine from the day before. It helps uh, support your serotonin and dopamine brain chemistry levels. Right. So it and it actually also helps keep calcium in your bones. So it had because calcium is what helps you contract skeletal muscle. So the magnesium helps put that calcium back or keep it in your bones. So Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you actually physically will be more relaxed. You can give kids some magnesium. Some people like a little drink that's on the American market called Calm. Calm. It's only 150 milligrams, but I, I really like for most adults, a therapeutic dosage of at least 400 milligrams. Right. If you have somebody that's got chronic gut issues like IBS or even like Crohn's disease, Mm -hmm. then they may do better with um, an oil, magnesium oil or a spray that they spray on their skin or a cream or Epsom salts. Epsom salts is a great way for children. Epsom salts baths, that's magnesium sulfate. So they can soak it up through their skin, either through the oil or a magnesium cream or the Epsom salts bath. But so this is the routine. I love magnesium for before sleep. And then for a lot of women and children, um, ashwagandha, 200, 250 milligrams. Yes. It's been used for over 5,000 years in Ayurvedic medicine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or holy basil, a lot of men tend towards more like holy basil. Ashwagandha and holy basil, which can be drunk as teas or taken as capsules or as tinctures, um, those both lower cortisol level. And cortisol is your stress chemical that yes. gets released in your sleep, uh, dumped in your in your bloodstream during sleep about 3 or 4 a.m. So this helps to curb that so it supports adrenal health. Right. I, I'm laughing because I, I want to share a quick story with you before we take our last break. I went out with my grandmother who was an herbalist and I was I was a little kid, probably four or five, six years old, and she seemed to know everything, Amy. She took me out to these wild fields in Germany and she said, this, my son, is chamomile. Oh, and I said, so it's beautiful. so pretty. And it she is. said, isn't it? Isn't it a lovely plant or herb? And uh, she said, we're going to pick some and we're going to make a tea from it. And I thought, really? We I can do that? that? And you are what you eat. Eat. I love that. So I have, here's, the, here's where the story gets funny. I added raw honey to it. And I thought, whoa, this is amazing. And I drank like 12 little cups, 14 cups of it. <laughs> and all of a sudden, <laughs> next thing I knew, Amy, I was like this. Oh, I, it could have been it affected your stomach too. But a little bit, so, if it's that much. You were sleeping, I huh? was sleeping at the... <laughs> and every, my dad, what, what's the matter with Nelson? Why is he sleeping at the, at the dining room table here? And my grandmother said... He had a little too much chamomile. <laughs> I fell in love with it because my whole life I've had a little trouble 
sleeping, you know, so. It's great for colicky babies. It's been studied on babies yeah. as young as six weeks old. So wonderful. chamomile is wonderful. It's one of my favorites. Amy, that. we're going to take our last break. Did, is it crazy how fast this goes? It's really fast. We're, Thanks for having me. Oh, on. it's been a pleasure. I am Dr. Nelson Bullmatch. This is Amy Derry. my guest. She's a dentist. We're talking about the many things you can do to sleep better, to breathe better, so that you live better. We're going to take our last commercial break, and we'll be right back. Safety Air Purification Systems, an air purifier with robust technologies that can filter, sterilize, and re-energize large quantities of air at a whisper quiet volume. It features a proprietary HEPA RX and pre-filter that act as a capturing layer going for big particles and ultra-fine particles. Its next layer is an activated carbon filter that absorbs and captures volatile organic compounds and noxious odors. From viruses to bacteria, its kill chamber packs a three-punch layer to destroy over 99% of anything that remains in the air. And while most air purifiers stop at the capture or kill stage, Safety Air Purifier takes it one step further, re-energizing clean, pure, sterilized air by creating negative ions within the revitalizing chamber. The Safety Air Purifier also monitors air quality in real time, utilizing smart sensor technology that helps you breathe better air, increase productivity, and improve morale. But don't just take our word for it. Ask the thousands of workplaces we've helped. Fortune 500 companies, dental offices, senior facilities, K-12 schools and universities, and professional sports teams. The Safety Air Purifier's robust technology combined to protect you against indoor air pollutants and viruses to make the most powerful yet quietest air purifier. Safety Air Purification. Hi everybody, Dr. Nelson Bullmash here. We are back. These shows, Amy, go so fast. I can't believe we have 14 minutes and then it's in the book, so to speak. That's right. Thank you so much again for being here. I appreciate it so much. You're, you have such expertise and you've helped thousands of people over the years. It's, it's really appreciated it by me and, and the audience. I know I know. I want to get people that saying, Nelson, that was so informative. Thank you. I hope so. Thank you. Yeah, you're if welcome. If it touches one person, that made it worthwhile. So before we go on, I want to thank one of my sponsors. The first was the folks over at Safety Air. They had the beautiful... Uh, advertisement throughout the show. And the second is my friends, Dr. Ken Kasky, who owns Advanced Recovery Therapy, and they are amazing. Do you happen to know them? I don't. I've yeah. heard of them. I've oh, heard wonderful they do things. brilliant, brilliant work. They have hyperbaric work. They do. Oh, that's great. Or, they have a $50,000 Arconia laser that is, wow. they, they can actually say it's approved by the FDA to help reduce or eliminate back pain. It, it oh, is unbelievable. Amazing. Cold laser. And I'm waiting for Dr. Ken, hint, hint, Ken, I'm sure you're going to see my show, mm -hmm. to let me know that everything is now fully open. They just expanded. And they got some incredible uh, far infrared saunas. Oh. They have, like, the real deal hyperbarics that are a quarter of a million dollars a piece. Wow. And where they lock you in there for 90 minutes, and you go to 15 to 20 atmospheres. Typically, they like to keep you at 15. but. Wow. It is what, Amy, it's what really restored my breathing after I had COVID. Yeah. Like I had done all kinds of things, done Russian peptides, which mm -hmm. I love, made a huge difference for me breathing, yeah. uh, did some standard process products, pneumotrophin PMG was very big at helping me. But what really turned the corner for me, and I saw lots of people at their center who had severe breathing problems who were at 78 to 82% oxygen saturation who went in by the time they were at five to eight sessions in the hyperbaric chamber, they looked at me and said, "You were, thank you for recommending this. I, I feel like I'm breathing normally again. I saw people awesome. whose hair started to come back, who, mm -hmm. who could start living life again, doing chores, doing things they loved. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Ken, his family, his wife, Sherry, son, Daniel, they are amazing. They will take incredible care of you. They are in East Cobb. Thank you all for supporting my show. I love and appreciate you. Can't wait to see you guys soon. Amy, I want to go in. We have about 12 minutes, not even quite 12 minutes, because i got to end the show in 11 minutes. I want to <laughs> talk a little bit more. I, When I had COVID, I started to develop real serious breathing problems. I'd wake up terrified. I had severe PTSD during the four months from November of 2019 through March, early March, I believe it was, 2020. I'd wake up and I wasn't breathing, and I... It was so strange to wake up wow. because I was so, I felt like I was going to black out, but I woke up because I wasn't breathing. Mm -hmm. And eventually I would gasp and I'd catch my breath, but it's terrifying to wake up in a dark room and you can't breathe and you're disoriented. And so one of the things that 
that the hyperbaric machines helped me with was breathing normally again. But and I, and what you know, I try to CPAP machine. I know that my son loves his. Mm-hmm. I know my son-in-law loves his. I know you advocate it, but I know you also have these mouth pieces. Uh, I want you to talk about these a little bit because you've indicated to me and your book did that these for some people can be as effective as a CPAP machine. Am I, am I correct? They, they can be. Plus they're, they are what we call functional orthodontic appliances. So they are functioning when you wear them, but they also will change and develop your face. So hopefully, and what we have had happen in our practice is a lot of our patients actually really improve their sleep studies after wearing these for about a year. And so wow. they sleep with them they wear them about 12 to 14 hours out of 24. That's the ask. So it does, mm-hmm. does take a commitment. Otherwise, it just seems like, I think, an expensive piece of plastic. But about once a week or so, we have people expand. So they start out rather small. Um, and it, you may, if anyone out there can watch, you may see some of these. But here's another. This is an after. So you get much bigger and you get space that develops where you've developed bone. You've grown bone over this time. Um, again, in our practice, we also try to support people with vitamins. Uh, we look at other things like heavy metals, um, other burdens on the person's life. Right. Maybe cranial work could, could be helpful mm-hmm. or chiropractics in some cases can be helpful. So right. it's autumn. This is a team effort. Uh, physical therapy for some people, maybe if they've had a back injury of some kind sure. or chiropractics again, like I mentioned. But um, what we find is these appliances, they they are really amazing. Mm-hmm. Not everybody can graduate, but a lot of people do graduate from using a CPAP. That's what we've had happen in oh, our I practice. I love that. I love the idea of that. And, I, and, and, I, and I know that, once again, my son, my steps, they love theirs. They travel with them. Sure. They're that important to them. And they come to our house. It's like, hey, do you have the distilled water to fill up our CPAP machines? Got it, guys, down in the pantry. But I, I could not sleep for anything. I had this thing on my face, and I kept thinking of the alien scene. About 35% of people really struggle to yeah. wear their CPAP. That doesn't mean they're not, that they got to where they're sleeping better. They still are having a severe problem. Right. When you realize that 40% of people that are low thyroid have a sleep apnea problem, there's a high percentage of people that have diabetes that have a sleep problem. There's a lot of people that are have an obesity issue who have a sleep problem. Right. There are certain types of cancer that are linked to sleep problems. A lot of these chronic disease processes, uh, even like gastric reflux, esophageal reflux, those are connected to sleep issues. History of concussion problems can be linked to sleep, ADHD, brain fog, and just not not having a lot of REM sleep. Ideally, we'd love to see somebody get about 28, 29% and a night of REM sleep. Mm-hmm. That's your. That's where you're going to heal. That's where you may also have some dreams as you come in and out of REM, of REM sleep. This is where you get downloads sometimes or inspiration. This is yes. how you get to be, to me, the best version of yourself, mm-hmm. who you mm-hmm. are supposed to be in this world. To me, these. this is the magic. We can really support people right. in that space and help them develop to be their fullest, their best self. And in doing so, they are going to age better. They're going to feel better. And their teeth are going to continue to look better. Their dental work's going to hold up. Of course. Amy, is it true that if you're having sleep problems, that it can actually shorten, not only decrease the quality of your life, but is it also true that it can shorten your lifespan? Absolutely. There are, are direct correlations with sleep apnea mm-hmm. and a lot of these other chronic problems. Like we talked about diabetes, heart problems, heart disease issues. Right. The severity of, of these types of issues mm-hmm. Problems like Epstein-Barr, Lyme, all these chronic disease processes, when you get better oxygen to your tissues all the time, because these not only just help you sleep, when you're developing the jaws, now you're able to open up this windpipe. You're getting better oxygen to right. your all of your tissues 24-7. When you are wearing a CPAP, it's, it's in some ways kind of like a glorified air blower. Now, I'm not knocking it. No, 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 it no. does a great job. Uh, that's a great way. <laughs> but but you 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 get up in the morning if you successfully wore it, you take it off and now you're going throughout your day but you still have a collapsed airway. So what can we do to support that? In dentistry we also have lasers nowadays that we can I... use to my first car was a Chevy Nova and after I had had it I was down on Augusta for dental school. I'd only had the car a year and a half or so. It was a great car. Thanks mom and dad because <laughs> they helped me. But it the the ceiling in the car collapsed. 
the the upholstery, right? Oh, so, got it. Got so it. if this to me, when you have um, flabby tissue or an underdeveloped mm-hmm. airway in the back behind your teeth, it's t- to me akin to trying to drive down your highway with your ceiling that's collapsed or your ah, airbags off. Right. So there's all this tissue. So we can even we we do a combination of therapies with people is, mm-hmm. is what I'm trying to say, where we try to structure, develop the skull more. We also try to do things to support the tissue and decrease inflammation. So do the do these orthotics, oral orthotics, is that is that what you can call yes, these? Yes, these are functional orthodontic Orthotic. appliances, okay, fancy okay. words, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and do they help expand the airway as they well? They do. They do because remember I used an analogy. If Here's my skull again. If you can bump out the wall on the side of your house or your dwelling where mm-hmm, you live, mm-hmm. the interior is bigger. Right. If you can drive down the highway with your car – in your car without having the airbags off or deployed, there's going to be more interior space. Space. Okay. When we develop the face more, we're supporting genetically what you could have had. And, and we've also realized is in young children by about the age of four, young children have already naturally had Mm -hmm. about Mm -hmm. 75 to 90% of what would have happened. And a lot of times, oh, we didn't even get into this, Nelson. The tongue, the tongue position. Oh, no, I'm frustrated yeah. with myself. We'll the, cover it. So the tongue is innervated by the vagus nerve. nerve. Mm-hmm. When you swallow, the tongue is, is meant to hit the roof of the mouth. It stimulates bone growth. Right. For a lot of people or kids that are have a tongue thrust or a tongue tie, or lip ties, the, it's like tying your foot down to an accelerator pedal on your ah, car. It. It's rubbing your engine. It's rubbing everything along your vagus nerve mm-hmm. chain, which is your heart, your lungs. It's your intestines. It's making you feel anxiety. And it can, in some ways, it's it's like burning you out. So now you don't right. have as much energy to develop other parts of your body. You're, you have a constant distraction going on. When you increase the airway here, you're creating a, an opportunity for more oxygen to all the tissues. We also talk to people a lot. I told you it's a multi, right. multifaceted approach. Sometimes we're also recommending or doing myofunctional therapy where we teach the person how to swallow. And even today, we actually had a shout out here. We had a baby that was born on Friday who came in and we did a tongue tie release because more and more younger parents are realizing the importance of the tongue tie. And we were taught it was just something you would see sometimes back in the day in school, sure. but it actually is fundamental to overall development. And so we, we also do those on adults sometimes depends. I imagine it's also got to be very, very important in its relationship to the baby being able to lock on to the nipple so that they can feed. It is. It yeah. is. So that's why we did this one today. And love it makes a big difference. You it's change the course right of away. this little one's life. Well, the parents noticed it. Well, they had a midwife who had noticed it. Right. So they, they came up. That's fantastic. For it. Congratulations. Well, no, it was, I don't, I didn't invent any of this stuff. I just get no, to do it. No, and I'm but, so excited but, just to get to do it. One of the things, Amy, that excites me tremendously about what I do is you can do something that makes a person function better that will ultimately, you know, may, maybe not immediately, but as time goes on, more energy more brain power, better memory, better right. ability to function, better That's ability right. to sleep. They'll feel better. They'll feel better. And when you feel better, you function better and you're a better person. And then all of society benefits. All of society benefits. That's so right. So it's super cool. Yes. It's, it's my passion. So I, I love do it. general dentistry, but this has become really at least half the practice because it's, it's just so exciting and people come in. Well, I want to remind everybody, difference. I love this book. We're nearing the end of the show. I want to ask Amy one more quick question. But her book is fantastic because it really summarizes all of the things from nutrition to these oral orthotic devices to CPAP machines, herbs, and so forth that you can use to sleep better. Check her book out. It's called Solve Your Sleep, and it's very good. It's easy to read. She makes it so it's user-friendly to anyone. You don't have to be a dentist or a doctor to be able to understand the terminology. Check it out. Buy it. You'll love it, particularly those of you who are having trouble sleeping and breathing. It'll be invaluable. Amy, one last question. Sure. Final thoughts to really improve your ability to sleep and to breathe while sleeping and breathe without worrying about sleeping, meaning every day while you're you know, walking around, working, exercising. When you're just at rest and you're not actively talking or eating, focus on where your tongue position is. I'd love it if you had, if you could put your tongue all the way up into the roof of your mouth, almost okay. like there's almost like there's glue between the back and the front of the tongue, the whole entire tongue. Right. It should be smack up against the roof of the mouth. 
That's one thing. That and that's actually, where its resting place should be. That's where its resting place should be. Yeah. That takes pressure or not pressure, but stimulation away from the vagus nerve. You will experience higher heart rate variability. You can stimulate the continuation of bone because every time you swallow, you're stimulating the spinopalatine ganglion. You're mm-hmm. stimulating, hey, we need bone up here. We need bone up here. That supports the whole ceiling. Right, right. Like when my upholstery fell in my car, if we can get something to support that all the time, you've got more airway all the time. That That's something you can do where nobody's even watching. Nobody yes. can even tell. And then I love the magnesium at night and maybe talk to your dentist or start paying attention if you are realizing you're clenching or grinding or not sleeping while well, there's so many solutions out there nowadays that you can do on your own. What is the name of your practice and where are you located? It's just my name, Amy Dairies. I'm in Roswell, Georgia. And um, I do do some lecturing to some other dentists. You will see more and more of this. It's not just me at all. I'm in Roswell, Georgia. 770-753-0067 is our telephone number. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really great having you here today. All right, folks, i got to close out the show. I'll be here in two weeks. That should be Tuesday, July 19th, if I'm not mistaken. I'll be back at 5 p.m. Remember, always be your best. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Health Matters with Dr. Nelson Bullmash, where we help you discover how to ignite your mind, body, and spirit connection. Join us next time when we will bring you more exciting guests and engaging topics. Meanwhile, feed your mind, exercise your body, and nurture your spirit. The United Intentions Foundation and its associates take no responsibility for the opinions and statements made by the talk show hosts or their guests.